Um, we had a little kicking competition there at the end. Uh, Mitch Johnson won it on a uh, left numbers kick from the 30. So 30 yard enough numbers is a good kick, but it was fun. It was good practice. The, guy, the young guys got a lot of good work today, and uh, it's like their energy and enthusiasm. So we'll have one more tomorrow, and then take a couple days uh, off, give them the weekend, and then hit it on Monday for Arizona State again. So we're doing some some prep, some prep for Arizona State a little bit, not a, not a lot. Just experiences that we've had as a staff uh, coming off of buys or in in a bye week is it. You know, you got to be careful how much you do too soon. You just want to keep the focus tight. So uh, we'll do a little bit, but mostly our bonus stuff will be Monday. We'll have practice Monday afternoon. So that'll be when we really hit Arizona State hard. So, other than that. Yeah. How do you try to sustain what momentum you took out of that Utah game through a bye week? Well, I think, uh, First of all, I think, uh, you know, coming out here and having good, crisp, quick practices, you know, so they don't they, they don't drag on, uh, keeping the focus tight, um, you know, just coming, really the most important thing is coming back Monday, you know, really focused in on the task at hand, which is Arizona State. You know, I just don't want them to get stale thinking about Arizona State too soon. I mean, we've planted the seeds in their mind, and I'm sure they'll all be watching the game on Thursday night, you know, to see Arizona State versus uh, Oregon, which would be a great game. But uh, it's important that we just come back Monday and just really get focused in quickly. Did you hear that at did you guys even practice during bye weeks? Um, we'd usually practice like one or two days. I think there was a couple, you know, Mike Holmgren used to give the guys the whole week off, and it was a lot of times dependent upon where you were in the season. If it was early in the season, then you, you were likely to practice. If it was later in the season, and guys were a little bit more beat up. Remember, you had four preseason games, and, and you know the guys were a little bit older. And then sometimes you'd give them the whole week off, but they were s never practicing in pads. We didn't do padded practices, and uh, they were about the same length—an hour and a half, hour and 25 minutes. But you, see, you know, it's still good to get some work in. And the thing that's great about these practices is the ability to get some of the younger guys that don't get a lot of work in our scheme stuff during the season because they're always doing scout team work. It's important to get them work. So we can try to take advantage of that one. Have you figured out the particulars of tomorrow's scrimmage yet? No. I think I'll probably uh, we'll come out and we'll do some individual. Um, we'll do a little bit of seven on seven and then we'll just get into I don't know that I'm going to have a format other than in my mind so that Noel and, and Lou and the players kind of have to react to situations. You know how we do a lot of times in practice to move the ball right. situations where we just create situations. I have a list of things that we want to get accomplished and then move the ball around so we get that done. Do you know how many plays you think about running? Probably not not, not a lot because mm. we won't be playing that many guys. You know, I mean, we're not going to put... The, the guys that are figuring into the game plans and getting work won't, won't participate. It'll be mostly just guys that haven't gotten a lot of or any action in games. Kicking competition at the end there. Yeah. How, how important is this week to special teams? Well, it's important. I mean, every week is. It, it, you know, our sp we've had a couple of plays that have made our special teams appear not as good as they are. If you take our our, uh, our average start after kickoff, we haven't lost that yet this year. Um, our net punt. You know, if you compare it to our opponent every week, we've lost it a few times, but I don't think anyone's been as consistent as Jeff Locke in terms of pinning the team inside the 10-yard line, not even the 20 or the 10. Um, our kick return game, when we get a chance to return it, has been decent, can always get better. But there's just a couple of, of kind of blunders that have really stuck out. You know, if you go back to last week, it, you know, the deal with Steven. When I look back at the play, um, with Logan Sweet at the end of the game, because that was a sky punt and the thing bounced right at him. It was just an instinctive deal to catch it. Um, I don't know that any of us, would, well, I know I wouldn't have been athletic enough to get out of the way of it, you know, and, and he just he couldn't. It was just a freak deal, and, you know, we, we learned from it. But, uh, and then, uh, you know, early in the season when we had trouble with the, the, the field goal protection, you know, I think we've done a good job of wiping that away. Um, I think, you know, yesterday was important, and today for Kaimi just, feeling the confidence that his teammates have in him, you know, even though he's missed a couple kicks, you know, he's, he's you know, he's a, he's a young guy, he's developing, we like him a lot, and just to get him out in front of his teammates and, you know, feel that they have faith and they have confidence in him, I think that helps him, so, uh, we work hard on special teams, you know, and, 
you take pride in it, and when it doesn't go exactly right, it, it's bothersome, and you know we go back and attack it pretty hard again. I never would have touched that ball on the punt. It would bounce over your head. I wouldn't have got down there. You would have gone like that. You could have even jumped. I couldn't even. I even got down there that fast. Well, you know, I, I was. Uh, it bothered me because we gathered them on the sideline. We said, okay, we're going to go. We caught bleed punt, and you know, eight seconds, and they had a returner, no returner back. We felt like they were going to blow the whistle, and the game's going to be over. Then when I went back and I looked at the film, the thing, the way it popped, it just popped right at Logan, and it, and it was just an athletic, instinctive reaction to to put his hands up. The only other option he would have had is to duck. And I just, you know, I, I cut him a little slack there, but also took it as a great opportunity to learn and even talk to our players about, okay, when we do bleed punt, and if Jeff's going to sky punt it, because it was a one step, they rushed 11, then as we approach it and circle the wagons, which we call it around the ball, then we have to, our perimeter has to be wider because we don't know where that thing's going to bounce. And it, it very well, with the way Jeff and the trajectory it comes down, it could very well pop back. So uh, that's the first time in my entire career in coaching, which is almost 600 games, that I've been in that situation, believe it or not. It's the first time I'd have ever had a, uh, a bleed punt to run out of game. So, you know, something can, comes up every week. You know, you've got to be prepared. So. Yeah, the, the punt returns where guys got pushed into the, the returners, I mean, were those just fruitful? Well, they're, they're not very good punts, and then, uh, what we have to do a better job there is it's you call it a Peter call, and it's it's kind of a universal term for a, a a short punt. And your returner is responsible on any of those punts that look like they could be you know get in in the range where your guys that are blocking coming down could get involved in in contact with the balls have to start screaming out Peter 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 Peter. When guys hear Peter Peter Peter, they're taught to get away from the ball. And so against Rice, and then was this was it this week that it happened? Was it, Cal, Cal game, yeah. Um, we didn't do a good enough job, obviously, as coaches, of emphasizing it, and then we didn't do a good enough job of executing it on the field. You know, we've got some guys back there returning punts that have a lot of talent, but haven't done it a lot, and they get locked in on the ball and forget to say Peter. Last week, I talked to Steven yesterday again about what he was thinking on that kick, and he goes, "Well, it was sailing over my head." And I was remembering earlier in the season when I let one go, and Coach Brick saying, hey, get back there, and if you can feel it, feel it. He goes, and I just fought, I forgot where I was on the field. He goes, I just simply forgot where I was on the field. And so, you know, fortunately we won the game, and fortunately we, run the, we won the Rice game, and we've had those, those mishaps, but it's something we've got to get cleaned up as we go forward, and I think that we will. You know, there's great experiences for these kids to go through as long as you win and learn from them, and they don't happen again. When something like that happens and he's a freshman, are you worried that his confidence might waver? Not not with Steven, no. You know, I think it depends on the person and the personality of that person. And Steven's a pretty confident kid and he does a good job and he works hard at it and he's, you know, he hasn't done it a lot in, at this level. But no, uh, not with Steven. You know, I think each individual case is different with, with regards to confidence. Like with Kaimi, for instance, you know, he's missed some kicks. But his confidence hasn't wavered, and the confidence in the team in him hasn't wavered, and that's really good to see. Okay? All right, thanks.